Today's story is about a case that was considered at the time the crime of the century. This case was even said to top the famously known Manson family murder. Make sure to watch to the end to see this upsetting twist. This video may be upsetting and graphic to some viewers, so with that being said, viewer discretion is advised. But before we get started, if you are a fan of the abandoned and historical locations, then you are in the right place. I post videos like this every Tuesday, so make sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss an episode. I will pin the best comment below just like this one. Okay, let's get started in today's video. In 1972, off the street of Hewlin in Fort Worth, Texas, Cullen Davis, who was considered at the time one of the richest men in America. He spent about $6 million to build his 13,000 square foot mansion on about 250 acres of land. This mansion would have five bedrooms, 11 bathrooms, even had an indoor pool and a 2,000 square foot master bedroom. Yes, a 2,000 square foot bedroom. That's bigger than most homes. But behind this beautiful and ginormous mansion lies a dark and mysterious crime that left two people dead and left people spiraling out of control to catch this killer. Wait, 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 wait. Let's back up just a bit. Understand the story, we must first learn a little bit about the characters and who they are. Thomas Cullen Davis was the middle child of a well-known Fort Worth old man, Kenneth W. Davis, or known to many as Stinky Davis. Kind of a funny nickname if you think about it. Okay, moving on. Cullen Davis married his first wife in 1962, which didn't last long. Then, when his father died in 1968, the money from the legendary Fort Worth old man was split between his three sons. Hours after his father passing, Cullen Davis married his second wife, Priscilla Lee Childers. It's said that since they already had the wedding planned, they thought it would be best to go through the wedding that day so that they could have time to mourn for his father's death. But who knows the real reason? This would be Priscilla's third marriage. She had one daughter from her first marriage, who was named Dee. He also had children from her second marriage, her son Jackie and her youngest daughter, Andrea Wilburn. Priscilla would say that 12-year-old Andrea had became a woman. She was 5'7 and played a lot of adult roles. She was also compared by others to have a lot in common with Priscilla. Some would go as far as saying that she looked like a younger version of her mom, and Priscilla would agree with this in an interview. She was said to have a huge passion for animals and would even take in stray animals off the street. She even had a big heart for people. Before the details get gruesome, let's first look into Cullen and Priscilla's marriage. The story goes that Priscilla first met Cullen at the Ridgely Country Club in Fort Worth while playing doubles in tennis. The couples had what seemed like a decent relationship, a dream couple that some would say. They were madly in love with each other, and to some it showed. Priscilla and Cullen were living a very wealthy lifestyle, feeling free to go anywhere and buy pretty much anything they wanted. Cullen was proud to show off Priscilla. In fact, statements would show that Cullen was so proud of being with Priscilla that in public he would sometimes walk a few steps behind her so that he could watch other men look at her, as she was at the time considered very attractive to the eye. Priscilla, never really living this type of life before, seemed to really enjoy and come accustomed to the wealthy lifestyle. Or from the little bit that I researched, that's what it seemed like. But once moving into their newly built home in 1972, things seemed to go from good to bad. As Priscilla would go on to testify later that towards the end of their marriage, Cullen would start to beat her and hit her. They would get into these screaming matches back and forth. Priscilla would say that Cullen had broken her nose twice and at one time even broke her collarbone. He even stated that Cullen broke her oldest daughter's nose during a huge fight. It was also said that Dee would instigate some of these fights with Cullen, but not sure on that. When people would see Priscilla in a bad state, they would ask, what happened? And she would say, it was a skiing accident. 
She even stated in her testimony that one night Cullen got so angry that he picked up the house cat and threw it on the floor, killing it instantly. Two years after the home was built in 1974, Cullen and Priscilla got into another heated argument on her birthday, which was about jewelry missing that Cullen allegedly took, which seemed to be the last straw in their marriage. Both agreed to separate and would start dating other people. Soon after that, the court ruled Priscilla the house, which would allow her to stay in the house until the court finalized with the divorce. During that time, Davis would have to pay a large lump sum of money to Priscilla for various things. The judge even had Colin pay for her doctor bills for Priscilla, which they had found two masses in her left breast, which was believed to be cancer. The man that Priscilla was dating at the time was living with her at the home. He was a 6 foot 10 basketball star who played for TCU College, which the campus was like literally right down the street from the home. The bearded man would be known as Stan Farr. Stan Farr was known by many to be a very nice guy and he really cared for Priscilla. She would go on to say that he was like a teddy bear. Later on, Priscilla and a few others stated that they were starting to get a bad feeling and that something felt off. Even one of Priscilla's good friends stated that she had a very bad vibe. She would later on state that she felt that Cullen Davis would want to kill her or even kill himself. This really led me to assume that the divorce was not an easy process and it seemed to have more complications than what was really written down. The mansion had a top-of-the-line security system, which made the home very safe and secure. And at the time, this was like the top of the security line. Not to mention the huge steel gate that they had down at the end of the driveway. Now, this is where things seem to take an unfortunate turn. The day of August 2nd, 1976, after the divorce hearing, Stan and Priscilla were said to have went out to dinner with some friends at the old Swiss house, then later that night stopped for a few drinks at the Rangoon Racket Club. While Priscilla and Stan were out having drinks, Priscilla's youngest daughter, Andrea, who was 12 years old at the time, was at the mansion all alone. At the time, Andrea's brother Jackie would not be at the home and her oldest sister Dee was supposed to be staying with friends so no one should have been at the house that night. After a long night out, Priscilla and Stan headed home. About 12.30 a.m., they pulled up to the driveway to the big metal gate. Everything seemed normal. When the gate opened, they drove up to the house. That was up on the hill, on the left. Then immediately, Priscilla knew something seemed off. As the lights were off to the home and the security locks were not set, signifying that the security system was disengaged. There was no other vehicles or signs in the driveway to signify that someone was there. Priscilla and Stan went inside to see what was going on. Stan went upstairs to the bedroom. Now, to understand, there was a doorway right next to the kitchen and you would enter into this doorway and that would lead you up the staircase to the bedroom upstairs. Now, while Stan was upstairs, Priscilla went to the kitchen to look for Andrea, her daughter. While calling out to her daughter, she then noticed the door to the basement was open and there was bloody prints on the wall. She immediately screamed in fear for Stan. Then, as she was screaming, a man appeared out of the dark, dressed in all black, wearing a woman's black wig and both hands together, holding up what looked like a gun that was wrapped in dark plastic. And the intruder said, Hi then shot Priscilla in the chest with the bullet entering in between her breasts and she fell to the ground in pain and then again she screamed for Stan. Stan came running down the stairs to where he came to that doorway at the bottom of the staircase and Stan and the intruder would struggle on either side of that door for a bit. Then the man in all black fired his gun through the door hitting Stan and Stan would cry out in pain. He opened the door to grab the attacker then the man would fire his gun, hitting Stan yet again He fell to the ground next to Priscilla. The intruder would shoot Stan two more times and those final shots would kill Stan Farr. Priscilla would watch her lover pass in front of her and as she said, and I quote, I watched his eyes, I watched him die. While the intruder dragged Stan's lifeless body to the other room, Priscilla now knew this was her only chance to escape. She was able to get off the ground and stumble to the sliding glass door, which was right next to the kitchen. She struggled a bit to get that door to slide open. 
she managed to finally open the door and she made her way out of the house. And as she was running away, she looked behind her to see the intruder chasing her. And as she was looking back, she stumbled and fell on the ground and then the man picked her up and started to drag her back into the house. Priscilla is pleading to the man who just killed Stan and probably her daughter. Please, please, please stop, she said. The man would go on and would tell her in a very calm voice, Come on. And as she pleaded with the intruder again, Stop, stop, you're hurting me. As this was going on, you could hear a vehicle pulling up on the other side of the wall on the right that led to the garage. And then he stopped dragging Priscilla, dropped her, right outside the sliding glass door and proceeded to head back inside to the kitchen. Which is assumed that the intruder went to find another way to the other side to sneak up on whoever it was driving up in the driveway. And in that vehicle would be Beverly Bass, one of Dee's good friends, but at the time Beverly didn't know Dee wasn't there and that was staying with friends. Driving Beverly was Gus Gavril. As this was distracting the intruder, Priscilla saw another chance to get away. She hid in a nearby bush, and as she was hiding, she could hear voices around the corner. And then, all of a sudden, she heard shots and screams. Gus was shot, and Beverly was able to escape by running away. Hearing the gunshot, Priscilla now knew this could be the only chance to make a run for it. She ran about 400 yards across the property to her neighbor's house while holding up her long denim skirt which was covering the bloody wound on her chest. As she was running, she was just praying that her children were okay, not knowing what she would later find out. She would stumble many times running away, even falling on her face in the grass. She knew she had to run and get away or she was going to die. Once she got to the neighbor's house, she would bang on the door and shout, I'm Priscilla, I'm Priscilla, let me in, I'm wounded badly. I live in the big white house off of Hewland, please let me in, please. The neighbors reluctantly let her in, and the ambulance and the police were called out. So she hid inside the neighbor's home till the police and paramedics arrived. When the police and paramedics arrived, she was calm at this point and even spoke normal that the police and the medical team didn't even know she was injured until they asked her, hey, would you come back to the house with us? She would then unwrap her skirt from her chest, revealing the bullet wound. And immediately, the paramedics went to work to stop the bleeding. But in fear that something might happen to her, she would immediately tell them that the man in all black that tried to kill her was Cullen Davis. She said, it was Cullen Davis who tried to kill me. As the police entered the home, they would find blood everywhere and the house in disarray as you could tell there was a struggle. They would go on to find Priscilla's youngest daughter, Andrea, who was shot execution style in the chest and her body was found downstairs in the basement. Stan, with the four fatal gunshot wounds, was found in the house dead as well. Gus was shot and paralyzed but survived and Beverly survived by running away. According to the testimony Cullen's brother, Ken, called and told Cullen what happened and that the police were looking for him, but he seemed unfazed of the situation that Ken was relaying. He acted that he didn't care who was shot or who was murdered. That same night, Cullen Davis was picked up and arrested. He stated that he was at the movies alone at the time of the murder. Not too long after that, he was able to post bond. During the first trial, Cullen Davis was only tried for the murder of Andrea. Cullen hired the best attorney money could buy. Richard Racehorse Haynes, who was a well-known attorney at the time, and not to mention he was very good in the courtroom. In fact, Cullen didn't even have to testify in the courtroom, as Richard laid out to the court that there was just no hard evidence such as fingerprints or even the gun linking Cullen to the murder. After a long, gruesome trial and Priscilla testifying and stating that it was Cullen Davis that she saw that night at the mansion when the murders took place. That just would not be enough to put him away. So with no hard evidence found at the crime scene, Cullen would be found not guilty and was set free. Even though it seemed very possible with the things that happened leading up to that night, such as the heated arguments and their relationship and all the money Cullen Davis had to pay Priscilla through the courts, 
these seem like pretty good motives that could lead to Cullen committing the murder. With no hard evidence, Cullen would walk free. Then, two years later, in 1978, Cullen was arrested again for supposedly hiring a hitman to kill Priscilla and the judge that was overseeing their ongoing divorce case. It's said that a man went undercover pretending to be a hitman and they recorded the two talking and planning out the attack. And through the courts, Cullen would go and testify that he did not want to plan a hit to kill Priscilla or the judge, but he claimed that it was a plot orchestrated by Priscilla herself to frame him. Again, after another long trial, Cullen Davis was acquitted and set free again. Cullen still walks as a free man today, and for Priscilla, she died from cancer in 2001, leaving behind her two children, Dee and Jackie. Now, to adjust for inflation, the 13,000 square foot mansion took an estimated total of $37 million to build. The mansion would have an outstanding, beautiful indoor pool encased with concrete and glass. This mansion is said to have many secret rooms inside. This unique home is connected with a tunnel that leads away from the mansion to a hatch at the end, which was said by some that maybe Cullen Davis used those tunnels to get away. In a recent interview with local Channel 8 ABC News, Davis would state that the tunnels were to keep the noise away from the house. Davis would re-enter the home that he left back in 1974. Davis was shocked to see that half of the home was changed from the original design. Before the home was built, Davis would say that it took him five years of cutting pictures out of magazines of what he wanted his home to look like. He talked about how he gave photos to the architect Albert Komatsu and said, and I quote, I said, here's the way I want every room to look. You put it together efficiently, unquote. Davis would later go on to also say that he wanted a place to have a party. Even today, many state that this was the crime of the 20th century, topping the Manson and OJ murders. This case would still leave people guessing to who committed the murders and what exactly happened on that horrible night. The home has since been a Mexican restaurant and most recently a wedding venue. Some of the original construction has been preserved, including its massive fireplace lounge and its wood floors, but much has changed and the large indoor pool was filled in with concrete. The building is to be completely demolished and to make room for a small development. But what was your thoughts about this crime of the century? Was it Cullen who attempted to murder Priscilla and killed the others? Could have it been Priscilla who staged the whole thing? Or was it just one huge coincidence? Let me know in the comments below. Okay guys, that does it for today's video. If you liked the video, please hit that thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss a video. We will see you on the next video. Peace, I love you, and as always, God bless.